Hello there, uh, my name is Andres. I'm from Latvia, as you can tell by my interesting accent. Um, and I'm a geek. I'm a computer geek. Somewhat a movie geek, but what I want to talk about is The Witcher 2. I finished it this weekend, just recently. And I liked it. It's a very fun and fun RPG. If you're a fan of role-playing games or you like uh, decision-making, you like the story as a part of your experience playing the video game, I really advise you to check out The Witcher 2. And I also advise you to check out this, uh, the first game, uh, the first Witcher. And it's also great. When looking at videos, the graphics are not as good as they used are now because the ga uh, that the first game came out in 2007 and it kind of feels stiff but still it's a fine game with a great story and so I loved the first Witcher I really liked the world the mature setting that it didn't shy away from the things it told like and it was truly mature in the sense that like you know that uh, Bioware, uh, is, uh, like when the first Dragon Age came out, it's this dark RPG, and it kind of was this dark fantasy game, but it had square swearing, like politics, but I still feel it's lighter than the, f the Witcher games, because you could only have one sex, well, sex scene in the game, basically, and it was kind of the censored, like, really, no nudity, nothing much, like The Witcher 2, for example, uh, Full frontal nudity, like it deal. The Witcher games deal with racism. Uh, there are a lot of swearing. Like The Witcher 2 is a more darker game, and that's what I like about it. That like the both games kind of had have this dark tone to them. So, with that in mind, after loving the first game, like I wanted to get the second game, and when it came out, I just got it and installed it, and I have a crappy old computer like this the thing I have now is built like from I had had an upgrade from 2007 like it's an it's an old game from summer 2007 it's almost almost four years old but still I could run the witch of uh, two on it perfectly like on medium to low settings but still it, it ran on smoothly like I could get it to run smoothly on my machine and that's great um, so I enjoyed it, I liked it. The things that improved are of course the graphics, even on my computer the game looks better than the first game. Uh, combat I think isn't still perfect, but it's a bit better, like they they got rid of all the stances. What I think is like it on scam, you have to use everything you got. You have to use your uh, swords attacks, um, like you have light and medium. No light and heavy attacks, you have to use them, you have to use magic. That's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the story. And I'll try to avoid spoilers as much as I can. They may be spoilers, so, bo so be warned. And particularly, I'm probably gonna spoil the first game. St still, it's, uh, it's an old game. If you want to play it, you probably haven't. And you haven't played it. I recommend you should and just stop this video right now. So the first game, uh, the main story element of it, this, the main plotline was basically this racial thing between humans and elves. Like there was a lot of racial tension between those, and you could feel as the game moved along, as this tension built and built and built. And you, as the main protagonist, Geralt the Witcher or Geralt of the Rivia. Uh, you had to choose a side. Somewhere in the middle of the game, I think more closely to the second part of the game, you had to choose whether you were gonna help humans or elves. For me, I chose elves. The way I like the way the, handle, the game handled that choice. Up until that point, you had uh, you had the opportunity to talk to people, uh, both from human and elven sides to kind of get into understand the politics of that world, of that universe, to understand the motives between uh, both of these two races, kind of, and do quests for both of them, do quests with them, you could actually like, even grow friends with some of them, you 
you can get really involved in all that and get to know. So by the time you you need you not knew everything you needed to know to make a choice. Granted, it was a hard choice. Still, for me, I had to think about it. But still, you had the information, and you knew what you were going into. When you make made the choice, you knew what the repercussions could be for each of those choices. And I lo loved about that game, like that one choice, which was was the choice in the game. Now, in the second game, there's again there's a choice. There's one big choice in the game that kind of determines how you're gonna play it along. Now, still the racial thing still present in this game, but not as much. I'm not gonna spoil that much, but from the title of this of this game, you kind of can understand that there's a king assassin. Geralt is framed for it, but he's released so that he could find the real slayer, the real butcher of the king. And that's kind of the main thread, like you trying to find this assassin who killed the king. You know what he looks like, but you don't know where he is. Uh, but still you encounter both elves or humans and dwarves. Like basically there's humans and non-humans, that's how the game handles it. Uh, and while the racial aspect of the game isn't that strong, you still have to deal with it. And here's the problem I have, like, there are two, there are two main characters, like, two main leaders, let's say, like, two key, fi key figures from both of the sides, from the elves and the humans. And somewhere one-third of the game through, you have to choose whether or not you have to choose with which side you're gonna go along like basically you have to choose between the human and the elf like the story requires you to change uh, to, uh, to go you t to get you to a different location and you can get there multiple ways but you need help from the humans or the elves like choosing one will kind of rotten uh, uh, the relationship with another but here's the problem up until that point, you didn't actually know a lot about these guys. You you don't do quests for them. You have quests with them, but not a lot. Like there's minimum interaction with them. You don't get to know them that well. Like it's not like in Mass Effect, like you can go to them and just talk with them after each big mission and could get to know them. The missions you take in mostly till that point that don't involve them directly. And then it happens in the game says, hey, you have to choose. But you don't know what kind of differences between each and the other. You know that they stand for different things and you kind of know what they stand for. But that's it. You don't know them really well as personalities. And the choice itself isn't clear what kind of... Uh, consequences gonna have in the long term. Like in the first switch you knew you chose sides, you chose a side in a big conflict and you were gonna help want that side to win that conflict. You kinda knew what you're gonna do. This time hey just choose already. And that's it. I was gladly surprised know this that uh after you choose uh choose one or another side to set the next chapter in the game goes and depending on that choice you're in a completely different location and do completely different quests and talk to completely different people like the game branches very well at that point but you don't know that really my choice that I made was only because I knew a fa one little fact that's gonna happen next uh, after my choice from the game itself like I think that it could be handled a lot better. They could give you more information about what you're actually gonna do once you make a choice. I think that choice should be a little later in the game where you could actually know these two people a bit better. It could be used to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more heavier decision like because these two sides don't like each other. But alas the game did what it did. And while the story is still good, like for a video game, the story is it's quite fun. I think that was one of the biggest problems. And when the the ending is kind of weak, like a lot of 
questions aren't unanswered. Granted, you can play the second time, make different decisions, then you get your answer. But what I like about games is still, even with games that are so branching, like still Mass Effect or Dragon Age, even with the decisions you make, and there, and you kind of make some big decisions in those games, you still have a sense of closure, like those games tell a story and the story is fully realized from the beginning to the end. In the second Witcher you kind of make these decisions and kind of in real life you don't get to know everything, but some just f things that directly involve you and you had a direct impact on it kind of li are left unanswered and characters just kind of things happen to them and just that's it. You don't know what what the future holds for them, like you leave them somewhere in dungeon rotting and and they're key characters in the story. That's the thing, they're not some kind of secondary characters. No, they they take a <clears throat> they take a big part in the game in the game and its story, but you don't know really what's happened to them. Like in the first game you had a little uh, epilogue movie, a clip that told you what actually happened to the world, what, how your decisions impacted. This time, just the game ends, like, thank you for playing. But, despite that, it's still I think it's a good game. It's, a, it's one of the best RPGs in recent years. It's most definitely better than Dragon Age 2. I think, for my personal taste, is better. I like Dragon Age 1 a lot, I like Witcher 1 a lot, but when both of these games came out this year, uh, Dragon Age 2 in March, this game in May, and kind of, like, after playing both of those games, I kind of liked uh, The Witcher 2 better. But that's my little opinion about the game, about its story. Hope you will enjoy it when you get it. Bye.